are this evening, but I think it's a proper convention for me to do it again. Welcome. Yeah, that feels right. So Olivia just reminisced with us about our last four years here. So I think Sam and I are supposed to take a different direction. According to our master plan, my speech is supposed to be more about our futures, where we go from here, taking our first stumbling steps into the world, going on to seek the great perhaps, you get the picture. My speech is supposed to be hopeful and poignant and funny, which is a problem, seeing as the only person here who could do a speech like that is Ben, and since I can't remember writing any petitions lately, I must not be him. <laughs> I'm supposed to tell you all that you can and therefore will become whatever you want to become, to follow your dreams and never listen to anyone but yourself. But I can't. I can't because, to tell you the truth, I hate inspirational quotes. <laughs> they simply don't work for me. Every time I hear something like, follow your own path, do what makes you happy, it irks me. <laughs> it's not because I entirely disagree with these sentiments. They're nice and quaint in their own little way, I guess. My problem is they're lacking. They give the illusion of some immutable fact of life when, in reality, they're just words. It's just a nice phrase someone said, and it's certainly not complete. Maybe I'm cynical or overly literal, but when I hear a bikes like that, short, sweet, and packaged all nice in a bow, I mentally add an asterisk. There are so many variables that can invalidate these nice little packaged phrases. The popular, just follow your dreams, is one that particularly irritates me. <laughs> Sure, follow your dreams, but while you're chasing your lifelong goal of opening a haberdashery or something like that, be careful not to get tunnel vision. Chasing your dreams is all well and good until you run off a cliff you never noticed was there because you didn't take the time to look where those dreams were leading you. Your future is not going to be bump free, and it's not going to be that simple. I feel like these quotes are like sixth grade math where you learn how to calculate the volume of a swimming pool, but only if that pool is a perfect rectangular prism. But, if you want to calculate the actual volume of your actual pool in your actual backyard, you're going to need to know how to use integrals, which means that this problem is a lot harder and a lot more complicated than your sixth grade math teacher ever made it out to be, and you're left confused and sitting on the poolside having just paid for too much chlorine. <laughs> going back to the follow your dreams idea, who said your dream's going to stay the same? I'm not saying that one day Billy's going to wake up and realize that instead of actuarial sciences, interpretive dancing and comparative literature are really his true callings. <laughs> but I don't think anyone has a path set in stone either. We're going to grow, and dreams are going to change. We can't run headlong after the first one that floats by and never take a moment to reassess. The phrase, follow your dreams, doesn't address any of this. It doesn't account for the difficulty of life or the fluidity of goals. But I know that's just nitpicky. We're always going to want advice that's short and sweet and simple, but then try to apply it to our own lives. Fine. But the root of my problem with inspirational quotes is the underlying idea that success can be obtained and failure can be avoided with something so simple. We can make clever quips and helpful phrases and shower them down upon ourselves and those who will come after us. But what gave us the authority to do so? There is no universal secret to success, and life can't be summed up in a neat little sentence. We're not going to change the world because of something inspirational someone once said to us. We're not going to change the world because we tried so much harder than the millions of others in our same position or because we're from Bolton. We're going to change the world because that's what people do. After today, after we graduate, we will go out into the world and make it different. It doesn't matter if your chosen path in life is guided by some quote you heard that changed your worldview, or because you're just doing whatever makes you happy. Each and every one of us is going to have amazing accomplishments. And to accompany those highs, I can guarantee that at least once, 
all of us will have spectacular failures. Maybe your biggest accomplishment will be saving life, Sam. <laughs> or maybe you'll be throwing an amazing fifth birthday party for your daughter. Maybe you'll take every setback with grace and a sense of ultimate purpose, like Megan Kelly. Or maybe you'll complain about the whole way through, like Colin. <laughs> Each and every one of us is going to do something that will change, maybe not the whole world, but someone's world. Success can't be summed up in a neat little sentence or quantified by some genius long dead. We each have our own paths ahead of us, regardless if they're the ones we planned or not. And they're going to be complicated, and they're going to be bumpy, but they're going to be yours. They will be unique to each and every one of us. It's not going to be like a TV show. You're not always going to be the protagonist. And when people ask you how you got where you are, you will certainly not be able to sum it up in one small sentence. So our lives will be simple, but they'll be ours. In a couple of years, we'll come across each other when the world is different and better because of the marks we've made. So I won't tell you to go out and be great or go out and just be you, because I don't need to. All I'm saying is just go.